Salome with the head of St. John the Baptist and Judas slaying Holofernes, two paintings in oil that might appear unassuming. They may even blend in with some of the other Baroque pieces in one of your local museums. But there is a story behind these two pieces that might just break your heart and or inspire you to stop the patriarchy. Hello, my name is Brianna Wright from BriIY, and I'm here to take you on a deep dive into the dark history of the talented Artemisia Gentileschi and the true meaning behind these works. If you're a longtime viewer or a current subscriber, you might know that this is not my usual style of content. I'm showing my face, I'm not creating any art, and so on. However, uh, I've been sort of toying with the idea about starting a podcast about controversial opinions, scandals, and drama in the art world. And I think there's so much cool history surrounding art as a part of culture, and I kind of just wanted an excuse to really spend some time reading about it. However, I am one person and I have never done this before, so the idea of doing a one-woman podcast on topics I had yet to research was a little daunting. It also seems kind of fruitless if I don't give the time and effort necessary to make this consistent, so I've decided to make this a series on the channel and possibly upload the audio as a podcast to other platforms if I can figure out how to do that. But as of this moment, I'm planning to create one episode every month for at least the next three months and I'm just gonna see how it goes. I'm also reading off of a script, can you believe that? What's that about? Hopefully that means there'll be a little less awkwardness, I don't know. In general, I know that my views and my channel engagement as of late have been much lower than it has been in the past. Um, I've been pretty consistently in the red in terms of views, interactions, subscribers, etc. Um, I really love creating content and being a part of this platform, but I am struggling with pushing myself to put out content that isn't being well received. Um, I also have a full-time job, I'm planning my wedding, I have a new house that I'm trying to make my own, as you can see, um, and I'm really trying to spend more time with my family, participating in local community theater productions and trying to make new friends, and of course I'm working on my next book because why wouldn't I be? Just honestly, as a result, I've been a little less than motivated to make videos, and I'm running out of pre-filmed material to continue posting consistently, so I'm sort of hoping that this project might light a fire again, um, since it's something I've been wanting to do for a long time. Um, and I just sort of want to address where I'm at before continuing and or possibly taking a break from weekly posting and cutting back to a time frame that works a little bit better for me. With all of that said, if this is something you like, please hit the like button or leave a comment down below. Just tell me your thoughts. Um, I plan on waiting for some feedback before I start episode two because frankly this was a lot of prep work. Um, I've got quite a bit on my plate right now. I'm actually a little sick as well. I don't know if you can hear it, um, but I wanted to thank you so much for understanding and let's just get started. Artemisia Lomi, or Artemisia Gentileschi, was born on the 8th of July in 1593 in Italy. She was the oldest daughter of famous painter Orazio Gentileschi. At a young age, Artemisia lost her mother, which many led to assume uh, boosted her interest in painting. This was, of course, at a time when women were generally kept from opportunities of artistic expression. Artemisia was really lucky to have access to the training and supplies that her father could provide. She worked alongside her brothers in her father's studio, but undoubtedly Artemisia showed much more talent than any of her siblings, and she was considered a remarkable talent by many. Even producing her earliest work as early as 15 years old, even her father, a man, bragged about how wonderfully talented his child was. And I know we love supportive parents. As she matured, Artemisia's style was very similar to her father's, but she chose to focus on much more natural subject matter, highlighting women in myths, allegories, and various Bible stories, including violence such as war and suicides. This all falls heavily under the Baroque style of art and was very popular right after the Renaissance period. The Baroque style is postmarked by religious themes, deep colors like blacks, movements, really stark contrasts, um, and all this is done with the purpose of achieving a sense of awe, to quote Wikipedia. In my period style in class form that I took in college, when I think Baroque, I almost always imagine still life paintings. Uh, paintings that are normally like warmer in color palettes and very heavily leaning towards primary colors. The lighting is almost always super harsh. We have really deep contrast in the back, really light objects in the foreground, super high brightness, um, and a lot of nature. It was considered very, very dramatic. Gone was the peace and tranquility and the symmetry of the Renaissance. This was an era in which art was dark and emotional. 
the way we like it. This expression was very easy for Artemisia. Um, unfortunately, her story was about to get a lot more dark, however. Although Artemisia was considered a super incredible painter, her many achievements were greatly overshadowed by a life-changing event, which dictated the direction of many of her works, including the ones I mentioned at the beginning. At the age of 18, Artemisia's father, Orazio, began working with a gentleman by the name of Agostino Tassi. On a trip to the Gentileschi home that May, Tassi persuaded Artemisia's neighbor, possibly her roommate, Tuja, to allow him inside, where he got Artemisia alone and forced himself on her. The plan of the assault was executed with the help of another man who had previously attempted to seduce Artemisia and who she had rejected. The intent was specifically to arrive at the home while Orazio was gone and take her virginity as revenge. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say that. I don't know what's monetizable anymore on YouTube um, because I've never made anything like this. So I said it, I said virginity. Artemisia fought back. She scratched his face, she pulled his hair, and even in her own words, grabbed his deal so tight that she removed a piece of flesh. She was, however, unable to stop him as he held her down, stuffed a handkerchief in her mouth, and stopped her from screaming. He held her legs open, and she was quoted saying, After he had done his business, he got off me. When I saw myself free, I went to the table drawer, took out a knife, and moved toward Agostino, saying, I'd like to kill you with this knife because you have dishonored me. And Tassi, with the most audacity and arrogance I've ever had the misfortune of reading, is said to have opened his coat and said, Here I am, and invited Artemisia to try. He did, however, block the blow and survived the ordeal. Now, of course, this is a time in history where virginity was highly coveted by all. Women who lost their virginity before marriage were considered tainted or lacking worthiness and dignity. Not only was Artemisia violated, but now her reputation was on the line. So, in response, Tossi promised he would marry Artemisia and restore her dignity, but after nine months, he went back on that promise and admitted that he never intended to marry her at all damaging her further. Enraged by the course of events, her father pressed legal charges against Tossi for taking his daughter's virginity. The trial to follow lasted a grueling seven months, revealing worse and worse information about Tossi at every turn. Tossi was believed to have assassinated his wife, committed adultery, several other instances of sexual assault, premeditated burglary of various paintings from the Gentileschi home, and so on. The judge also had to stop Tossi mid-testimony several times because he was contradicting himself. He included clear falsehoods that were so easily disproved. Generally, Tossi was becoming more and more hated by the masses, and he was even overheard bragging to others about taking this young woman's virginity. In spite of his inconsistencies and falsehoods, Artemisia was the one who was tortured so that she might tell the truth. Her hands were tied up with ropes so that she could be tortured using a tool called thumb screws, which clamped down on your thumbs and drove screws through the fingernails and the nail beds to cause a considerable amount of pain. She repeated her story over and over again, never faltering, no inconsistencies, and eventually claimed that the thumb screws were basically like the wedding ring she never received. She yelled across the room to Tossi saying, this is the ring you gave me and these are your promises. Whew, the girl is getting heated. Take a breath. Okay. Witnesses were brought from both sides. Parades of character witnesses swore up and down that Artemisia was wholesome and hardworking. She rarely went out and certainly never spent any time with any men outside of her own family. Tossi, however, brought his friends and other men who claimed Artemisia was a harlot who slept around with at least five other men that he knew of and posed as a nude model. This, of course, was unsubstantiated by evidence, and naturally, Orazio Gentileschi eventually sued the gentleman for bearing false witness, because why wouldn't he? Great father figure. We love Orazio. After all of this, Tossi was found guilty. This was stunning and nearly unheard of in a time where women would never win cases such as this. But his sentence is a little unclear between sources. It was either banishment from Rome, which was never enforced, or approximately eight months in jail, from which he was pardoned by the judge. Either way, justice was not served for Artemisia, and she was still shamed by a culture for being deflowered by a man who was not her husband. And she eventually had to get married to a relative of one of those character witnesses for her and moved to Florence to escape the social persecution. She wanted to get as far away from Rome as she could. While Artemisia was a super talented artist, she was considered illiterate, and since she wasn't able to write, she used her paintings to express her personal experiences, leading her to create these amazing pieces, Salome with the head of St. John the Baptist, and Judith slaying Holofernes. 
These works effectively reflected her story and, frankly, the ending she deserved. Salome with the head of St. John the Baptist was painted in 1615, only three years after her trial, and it depicts, as the name would imply, Salome looks on a silver platter which hosts a severed head, though what makes this piece interesting is the faces of these two iconic biblical characters. Salome is depicted with a reddish brown hair, a long, straight nose, and a pale complexion. Artemisia Gentileschi was known for creating several self-portraits, and this depiction of Salome was no different. The painting bears a striking resemblance to the artist herself, and the head of John the Baptist bloodied upon the platter is none other than the head of Agostino Tassi. Through her art, Artemisia was enacting her revenge upon the man who dishonored her and caused her so much pain. Judith slaying Holofernes was no different. It was painted sometime between 1620 and 1621. The work depicts two women holding a man down on the bed. The woman closest to the head of the man holds a sword and is in the process of beheading the man, whose eyes stare back at her, widened in horror, fully aware of what is being done to him. In this instance as well, the face of Judith is uncannily similar to the face of Artemisia Gentileschi, and the face of the man is unmistakably that of Agostino Tassi. Many note the addition of the second woman participating in the slaying of Philophernes outside of Judith. Some consider it a realistic approach as two women may be needed to hold down a full-grown man, but Gentileschi wonders through her piece, what if women got together? Could we fight back in a world ruled by men? I love that. <laughs> These two were easily the most violent and memorable, but Gentileschi didn't stop there. In 1922, she also produced a piece entitled Susanna and the Elders. This piece features a woman, Susanna, bathing and being spied on by two old men. These men are said to represent both Tossi and his accomplice in Artemisia's assault, getting right up into the woman's space as she tries to shoo them away. It is fairly uncommon to see women of this time standing up against their oppressors, and especially in such a public way. Court documents and transcripts from over 400 years ago tell us the story of this brave young woman and the way she gave herself justice. Artemisia Gentileschi became one of the most famous artists throughout Europe, making her name well known from Italy to London. She was even invited to London to paint for Charles I in 1638, where she painted self-portrait as the allegory of painting. As she did in so many of her works, she represents herself as strong, muscular, and clearly demonstrating the power of a woman with a paintbrush, especially those who want to make change for themselves and for others. Artemisia is, even today, considered a feminist icon, and I must certainly agree. I only learned of her work and her story in the last few weeks, and after stumbling upon it, I just knew I had to share it. While considered controversial art at the time, Artemisia Gentileschi should be praised for her courage and considerable strength. And that is our first episode of Artroversy. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know what you thought in the comments below. Uh, this one certainly had a kind of true crime vibe about it, so very well out of my realm. Certainly outside of my usual degree of monetization, as mentioned, but uh, because I'm an academic at heart, I did want to credit where I got my notes from. They were an amalgamation of various sources and Google searches, including Wikipedia, of course, uh, an article in The Guardian, trial notes from the website Webwinds, and another article that I found in The New Yorker, which I will all have linked below. I realize that this may not have been the fullest picture of Artemisia Gentileschi or her story, and I do welcome any criticism or corrections in the comments. Again, this is my first time doing something like this, and if I continue, I do want to be sure that I am doing these things well and doing these artists justice. Uh, if you like what you saw, feel free to like and subscribe. I do a wide variety of art related related content, uh, DIYs, original artwork, reviews, the occasional vlog. Who knows what next week will be? I don't even know. Either way, I will be here on Sunday at noon Eastern Standard Time, and I do hope to see you then.